Chapter sixty six of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter sixty six The Opening Up of the Holiest. Hebrews chapter nine, verses eleven and twelve. But Christ, having come a high priest of the good things to come, through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, that is to say, not of this creation, nor yet through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, entered in once for all into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. In studying the meaning of the Mosaic ritual, there are specially four things through which the Holy Spirit shadows forth to us the mysteries of redemption, the good things to come of the new dispensation that Israel was to look for. These are the priest, the sanctuary, the blood, and the way into the holiest. We have these four things here together. There is Christ the high priest of the good things to come. There is the greater and more perfect tabernacle. There is his own blood, and there is his entering in into the holiest. As we apprehend the power of these things, we shall know the meaning of his having obtained eternal redemption. Let us hear what the Holy Spirit speaks of the opening up the holiest and the wonderful path in which that was effected. The writer uses a very remarkable expression, Christ through the greater and more perfect tabernacle entered into the holiest. The two compartments of the sanctuary are the symbols of two states of life, two degrees of fellowship with God. The epistle teaches us that Christ knew this difference in his own life experience, and, in entering into and opening up the higher one for us, passed through the lower. He entered into the holiest, through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, through the experience of that spiritual reality of which the tabernacle was the shadow. The holiest is God's immediate presence, the holy place a drawing nigh to God with a veil between. The flesh, man's fallen nature in its weakness and its exposure to all the consequences of sin, is the veil. Christ has dedicated for us a new and living way through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. When he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, that life in flesh, with its liability to temptation and its weakness, with its possibility of suffering and death, with its life of faith and prayer and tears, with its need of learning obedience and being made perfect, with its subjection to the law and its curse, was the holy place, the first tabernacle, through which he had to pass to have the veil rent in his death, so to enter in and appear before God. Christ lived with his people in the Old Testament. He passed through the first tabernacle as a spiritual experience in perfect reality. It was only with his resurrection and ascension the New Testament began. Yes, Christ passed from the holy place into the holiest of all. When he died, the veil was rent in twain. The two compartments were made one. The priest who was in the holy place could see, could enter into the holiest. All that was in the holiest, the light of God's presence between the cherubim, could shine unhindered into the holy place. In Christ the veil of the flesh was rent asunder and taken away. The free access to God was opened up, not only as a thing of right and title in virtue of our pardon, but as a thing of power and living reality. Ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of Christ dwelleth in you. When the veil was rent, and Christ entered in, the two abodes, what had been the dwelling of God and what had been the dwelling of the priests, were thrown into one. The eyes and the hearts of men might freely and boldly look up and rise up and greet their God and Father. In Christ they had their place before him. All the light and love and holiness of the Most Holy shone into the holy place. The Spirit of God, as he was received by Christ from God the Father on his ascension, passed down into the worshippers. The Pentecostal gift brought down from above, the higher life into which the blessed Son had entered, the Holy Spirit made the light and love and holiness of the inner sanctuary not only a vision, a revelation, but a possession and an experience. The veil of the flesh had been rent. Christ has entered once for all, having obtained everlasting redemption. The dwelling of God and man has been thrown into one. 
the spirit of heaven has been given to signify to us and to give us the living experience that the way into the holiest has been made manifest our entering in our dwelling in god's presence in the light and nearness and holiness of the most holy is a spiritual a heavenly reality it can only be apprehended by the tender by the perfect conscience which the holy spirit gives to him who is willing to give up all to be saved completely by the perfect whose senses are exercised to discern good and evil but to all who are willing to pass through the rent veil of christ's flesh to die with him as he died and live with him as he lived the holy spirit will show it the way into the holiest is opened up christ having come entered in once for all four thousand years after man's loss of fellowship with god in paradise had to pass fifteen hundred years the veil had to hang with its solemn injunction not to draw near thirty-three years the son of god himself had to live on this side of the veil but at length once for all and for ever the way was opened fear not o christian to whom these things appear too high fear not be thou faithful through faith and long-suffering we inherit the promises persevere in the faith of what christ has accomplished once for all he entered in the second adam in whom our life is whose members we are persevere in the faith of the infinite meaning of that great transaction and to thee too will come a day when in thy experience thou shalt enter and go out no more for ever this entering in and opening up of the holiest was solely and entirely on our behalf that we might live and serve there therefore the practical part of the epistle commences at once therefore having boldness to enter into the holiest let us draw nigh that is the summing up of the whole epistle god is not content that we should serve him with a veil between let us know clearly which of the two positions we occupy as christians within or still without the veil after i had lived for thirteen years in the holy place seeking to serve god there it pleased him who dwelleth between the cherubim to call me to pass through the veil and to enter the holiest of all through the blood of jesus End of chapter sixty six